Hudson County View live at Uncut. I'm your host, the man of the hour, too sweet to be sour, John Our Highness, and we're going to talk the latest and greatest at Hudson County News as we do every week. So, obviously, there's a lot going on post post election, but first we're going to talk about Carmelo Garcia, the former Hoboken Assemblyman, pleaded not guilty to a 31 count indictment, charging him in a massive bribery scheme based out of Newark. So we're going to tell you the details about that. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on with the Jersey City Ward C runoff election. We of course. Have Councilman Rich Paggiato looking to defend his seat against Kevin Bitt, upstart challenger, who has some help from Wardy e. Councilman James Solomon. So we're going to tell you what's going on there. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the Mile Square City. They're talking about giving their elected officials and directors some raises. So we're going to tell you what's going on with that. And we're also going to talk a little bit about what is going on at City Hall. A lot of people want to see the Hoboken City Hall reopen fully to pre-pandemic levels. So we're going to tell, talk about that and much more right after we hear a word from our sponsors. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201-867-2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage, let us be your good friend. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Hudson County View live at Uncut, John R. Highness. Let's talk about what's going on with the Hoboken Board of Education. So, we just found out a couple, uh, couple hours ago, I guess we'd say day and a half ago, to be specific, that the Hoboken Board of Education wants to have a new high school and there's going to be a school referendum on January 25th. So let's look at this email blast that the Board of Ed set out late Tuesday night. As has been widely discussed, district enrollment is on the rise. Since 2015, enrollment has grown while our facilities, many of them built before 1910, have remained static. With enrollment increases in the general age of the district's existing buildings, long-range facilities planning has been a top priority. It goes on to say, we are thrilled to present to the community a facilities project, including a new high school, that will meet the needs of our growing population, our academic programs, and will provide recreation space that the entire community will be able to enjoy. We are extremely proud that this project reflects our wider goal of bridging our school community to the broader Hoboken community. So, obviously the question is, where is it going to be built and how much is it going to be costing taxpayers? And frankly, we just don't know the answer to that yet. Uh, all we know right now is, again, the referendum will be January 25th, 2022. And also that the planning board will hear this project in early December. So, you know, probably the next two weeks or so. And uh, that that's really about it, though. I mean, the costs are, you know, projected to be in the $200 million range, but you know, nobody's saying that formally yet, so we're just gonna have to keep our eye on it. Uh, you might remember that back in December 2018, the North Bergen Board of Education successfully passed a uh, referendum to uh, bolster their high school as well. So that's basically all we have there. I mean, you know, the current high school is at 800 Clinton Street, and this was built in 1962, and the district had just over 2,200 students enrolled as of uh, October 2020 numbers from the New Jersey Department of Education. So, moving on, let's uh, talk a little bit about what's happening in Jersey City Ward C, as I said at the top of the program. So, something that I thought was a little interesting is we see Ward E. Councilman James Solomon ready to fundraise for Kevin Big. So, he sent out an email blast to uh, a select list, 
That said, thank you all so much for your support to re-elect me in the City Council of Jersey City. I'm eager to get back to work to push Jersey City to build a livable and equitable city, and that work will be much more fruitful if I'm joined on the council by my friend Kevin Bing. As you may know, Kevin is running to represent Ward C, and he faces a runoff election on December 7th. Kevin's running a similar campaign as I did, proudly progressive and independent for the political establishment and real estate developers. So, uh, as I said, and as I'm sure you all know, Kevin is uh, trying to unseat Rich Baggiano, two-term incumbent. He won as an independent in 2013, again as an independent in 2017. He ran with Mayor Fulop in November. He got about 44% of the vote. Uh, Big got about 30%. Tom Zupa about 26%. And that brings us to the December 7th runoff. As you know, that uh, if nobody hits 50% in the general, then we got to do it again in November. And so that's where we're at. Uh, and as I'm sure everybody watching knows, Solomon won uh, by a pretty strong margin, 69 to 31 uh, roughly, against Chief Municipal Prosecutor Jake Hudnut. So there's no runoff for him this time. Of course, he was elected in 2017, December runoff, winning uh, against Rebecca Symes. But now he's just uh, waiting and watching, and uh, he's obviously going to be lending some of his uh, political capabilities to Kevin Big here. So, you know, him and... Uh, Frank Educational Gilmore, as you guys uh, saw and heard last week, were the only real upsets in this election cycle. And uh, right now, Mayor Stephen Fulop enjoys a nice 6-2 majority, and uh, it's going to come down to this runoff. So we also saw on the page that uh, this is going to be a proof of vaccination and indoor masking required event, and it's going to be at a private residence on Saturday. So... And the ticket price has also started $100. So with that said, uh, you know, this is an interesting race, right? Because we've, uh, we've heard a lot from the incumbent about how this is going to be a referendum on parking versus bike lanes. So that's obviously a perspective that uh, some people share. And of course, some people don't. You know, there's been a lot of comments on Facebook and Twitter on this. And I'm sure it will continue uh, well into December 7th. So while we're talking about this, uh, let, let's see what the Rich Baggiano had to say. He said, Kevin Big knows that his plans will remove hundreds of parking spots of our neighborhoods, but now he's in the runoff. He's too scared to admit it. Everyone knows where I stand. I've always been against trading parking for bike lanes, and I always will be. Instead of making false attacks on my character, Kevin should answer these very simple policy-based questions and come clean about his war on cars policy agenda. So pretty strong words from the incumbent, if you ask me. And, uh, you know, he was able to answer and he said it seems clear that councilperson Baggiano wishes to brand himself as a single issue candidate obsessing over parking and is ready to tell voters that he's willing to maintain the status quo even if it comes at the cost of street safety it's impossible for me to respond to Baggiano's bogus claims because he cites no source and how adding bike lanes on Baldwin Avenue would remove parking spaces and as you recall last week the councilman said that this bike lane plan something that is a uh, very similar to what Mayor Fuller presented uh, about a year ago, uh, would eliminate about 70 parking spaces. So uh, that, that's the context on that statement. And, uh, you know, he continued that our platform isn't exclusively based on adding bike lanes, but rather reimagining our streets so that our seniors, children, and others aren't killed in May because of the unsafe traffic design. And he cites the New Jersey State Police, who said that 22 people have died on Hudson County roads due to fatal crashes this year. So with, uh, with that in mind, he also would like to see a debate uh, but it doesn't look like the incumbent is interested in doing that. I mean, obviously, runoff debates are not common. Uh, but the response there was simply that, uh, well, let me, let me take it from Phil Savitsky, the Pagiato campaign spokesman. He said, Kevin Big is a typical politician who won't even answer simple questions about his plan to eliminate hundreds of parking spaces. So until he's willing to be upfront about his plan to trade parking spaces for bike lanes, Councilman Pagiato is going to remain focused on serving his constituents and meeting voters where they are. We're going to take a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. Ford made their first all-electric SUV a Mustang. Rapid acceleration, reactive handling, 300-mile range. You control how it feels and how it sounds. It knows you. It dials into your preferred settings. It has an array of driver assist technology. Cameras and sensors enhance your awareness and provide you with additional control. But it's more than cutting-edge technology. It's the spirit of it. It's a Mustang. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. With amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, light rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, J.C. Penney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. 
A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one pass stop away or a quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you, Newport. Live like you want. Hudson County View live at Uncut. John Arheitis. So we're also going to talk about what happened uh, in relation to the Jersey City kosher shooting on December 10th of 2019. Now, of course, you guys all know that this was a domestic terrorism incident per the New Jersey Attorney General at the time, Gubbio Graywall. And uh, now we actually just found out that a grand jury was impaneled on this. And uh, they were looking at the potential of charging 12 Jersey City police officers and one Newark, Newark police officer. Of course, there was a tremendous law enforcement response to this. And, you know, not surprisingly, for those of you that have been following along, there will be no charges issues. The grand jury said that they don't see any reason to. Uh, the reason they were looking at this is, of course, it was a fatal incident. You know, there were uh, four innocent lives claims, including one of uh, police detective Joseph Seals. Uh, and there, eventually, the shooters ended up getting gunned down by the police, so that's why they were looking at this. But again, for those of you that have been following closely, it's not surprising that there aren't any charges here. So let me just uh, sum up what the attorney general is saying. So obviously, the shooters were David Anderson and Francine Graham. Uh, they were fatally shot by police. I just mentioned uh, Detective Seals was one of the innocent killed, as well as Mindy Ferenz, Douglas Miguel Rodriguez Barzola, and Moshe Douche. And uh, that was a supermarket. And that was about a three-hour firefight, again, December 10, 2019, right? So the fatal police encounter was investigated by the Office of Public Integrity and Accountability. It was presented to 16 to 23 New Jersey residents called to serve on a grand jury in accordance with Directive 2019-4 which is the Independent Prosecutor Directive, and that was issued back in 2019, again under uh, Attorney General Gubir Graywall. So in July 2021, OPIA issued standard operating procedures to ensure that these grand jury presentations are conducted in a neutral, objective manner and with appropriate transparency regarding the process consistent with the Independent Prosecutor Directive. So they had interviews of witnesses, collection of forensic evidence, review of video footage, and autopsy results from the medical examiner. So it sounds like, you know, pretty comprehensive look of everything that happened that day. And uh, after hearing te testimony and evidence, the grand jury concluded deliberations on Monday. That was November 15th, and they voted no bill, meaning a majority of grand jurors found the actions of the officers were justified. Again, not surprising, uh, because as you guys probably all recall at this point, according to the investigation, Anderson and Graham encountered seals in the Bayview Cemetery in Jersey City, and they parked a, a white U-Haul van directly across the street from the J.C. Kosher supermarket at 223 Martin Luther King Drive in Jersey City, and Graham was a passenger in the van. Within seconds of parking the van, Anderson exited the driver's side with a rifle in his hand. He walked towards the Kosher supermarket and began shooting. So, you know, it's, uh, again, pretty expected. Uh, you know, some people were surprised that this was even getting reviewed. But again, due to that prosecutor directive, anytime there's a fatal shooting, they're going to look at it. Uh, so those police officers involved uh, that were cleared uh, from the Jersey City Police Department, that's Carlos Castillo, George Lopez, Eric Tavares, Mark McKnight, Patrick Sullivan, John Boba, Stephen Gigante, James Creco, John Antman, Joseph Solomon, Edward Fernandez, Felix de Jesus, and the Newark police officer is Joseph Carrick. So uh, again, very expected result, really no surprise here uh, for those of us that are aware of what happened with this anti-Semitic attack. So let's, uh, let's move on. Well, let's uh, talk a little Bayonne, right? So this race is not coming anytime, you know, imminently. Uh, you know, it's not going on until May of 2022, but we're already seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of shots fired. And the thing is, it isn't from a candidate. It's from a uh, super PAC based out of Washington, D.C., so this pack is called Citizens for Strength and Security Fund. And if you look them up on the Federal Election Commission website, they don't have any donations coming in, which is uh, unusual. They don't have really any expenditures going out either. Uh, but they still obviously have money to start a website. They've done a couple video ads and they had a billboard. So this, uh, as you guys know, was the League of Municipalities this week, right? That's over in Atlantic City. And they took out a billboard right on the 
Atlantic City Expressway right after you pay the toll. And it says dirty streets, dirty behavior, dirty politics, had enough. Call Mayor Davis and it has his office number 201-858-6010 and tell him to stop making Bayo dirty. And their, their website, dirtydavis.com, as we spoke about previously. And uh, I mean, there's really not a whole heck of a lot else to say there. Uh, you know, there's a gender discrimination suit, which is highlighted in the uh, billboard, and that's filed by business administrator Melissa Matthews. And uh, we're going to see what's going on there. You know, we saw a couple plaintiffs dismissed from the suit. That was uh, Tim Boyle, Mark Bonomo, and uh, Eduardo Ferrante, who's the OEM coordinator. But she has filed a motion to try to get them back in the suit. So, look, this is going to be a long game for both parties, right? I mean, nobody's going to stand out on this anytime soon, certainly not before the election. So, and uh, it looks like Sharon Nadrowski, the council president, is going to be the candidate. But nobody's announced anything yet. And obviously, we're fastly approaching the holiday season, so we're going to see. But uh, the Peninsula City definitely looks like there's many hits to come in 2022. So certainly, that's a place you want to keep your eye on. Uh, you know, we got some Mile Square City business to discuss, but I think we're going to hear uh, one more break from our sponsors, so we'll be right back. Anna Pinto Properties, Jersey City, shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces and addresses your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintodevelopment.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Introducing the all new Ford Maverick. A truck for people who do stuff and people who make stuff. People like Gabrielle Union. I make this look good, don't I? Who haul whatever they want to wherever they want. Like wood to build things made of wood with. And friends to get weird with. It's for long trips that the standard hybrid engine with a targeted EPA estimated city fuel economy rating of 40 miles per gallon helps with. That an eight inch touchscreen connects with and any trip that this interior makes more comfortable. But we'll let Gabrielle tell you all about it. Or I could just tell them it's a Ford truck that starts at less than 20,000 MSRP. Yep, that works too. The all new Ford Maverick, built to defy expectations. Hudson County View, live and uncut, John R. Highness. Like I said, we're gonna discuss some Mile Square City business, so uh, let's talk about Probably the most uh, notable thing I would say in the past week when we're talking Hoboken, and we're talking about former Assemblyman Carmelo Garcia. He was also a deputy mayor in Newark, and that's where this 31 count indictment stems from. But he pleaded not guilty to this bribery scheme that he's accused of by federal prosecutors back on November 3rd. So Garcia, 45, still lives in Hoboken, uh, pleaded not guilty to a laundry list of charges during a November 3rd arraignment via a video teleconference with U.S. District Judge Edward Keel. And uh, that's according to public records that you could access on the PACER website. So the hearing was just 13 minutes long, started at 1130, ended at 1143. Uh, not surprising. I mean, arraignments are usually pretty quick and being virtual, you know, there's probably not a heck of a lot to talk about. But if you remember when this story came out last month, the U.S. Attorney's Office charged Garcia along with Frank Valvado Jr., he's 52, Erwin Soblowski, he's 60, of Springfield, and they're co-owners of a New Jersey-based pawnbroker and jewelry business. And... Uh, there's quite a bit here. They were charged with one count of conspiracy to defraud the city of Newark and the NCEDC of Garcia's honest services facilitated by the use of interstate wire transmission, 17 counts of honest services wire fraud, and four counts of use of interstate facilities to promote and facilitate bribery in violation of the Travel Act. Garcia is additionally charged with three counts of receiving bribes in connection with the business of a federally funded local government and organization, and Velvado and Sablaski are additionally charged with three counts of offering those bribes, as HCV first reported. So again, this is a pretty sizable indictment. Uh, you know, this isn't just like your typical two, three, four count uh, charges. This is, uh, again, quite substantial, a few dozen here. So they're basically, they're basically saying, uh, to give you the long story short, that the former Hoboken Housing Authority Executive Director accepted high-end watches and jewelry from Vavado and Soblowski's business in exchange for using his official position and influence to advance real estate developments. So they have text messages and phone records related to the case, which they say implicate the three men in the various aforementioned crimes. And, uh, you know, they gave a number of instances of what they allege is egregious conduct. And 
for, for example, June 2018, Garcia, then Newark's acting deputy mayor and director of the city's Department of Economic and Housing Development, allegedly received an envelope containing $25,000 in cash supplied by Valvado through an intermediary in the restroom of a New Jersey restaurant. And uh, if you read the complaint, it, it, you know, there's quite a few other instances that are similar to that. And uh, the auto services fraud conspiracy and auto services wire fraud charges each carry a maximum penalty of 20 years in prison, while the Travel Act charges ca each carry a maximum penalty of five years in prison. Additionally, the bribery concerning governments receiving federal funds charges each carry a maximum penalty of 10 years in prison, and all charges are punishable by a fine of $250,000 or twice the amount of the pensionary gain from the offense. So, you know, there's quite a lot riding on this case. So uh, we're going to keep you updated. You know, we're going to let you know what happens with these future filings. So, again, sticking with the Mile Square City, there was a council meeting on Monday to accommodate the league, and uh, there were two fairly significant things, I believe. And uh, the first one, which I don't think anyone could really argue is, uh, is a pretty notable story, is that there's an ordinance that's going through right now that would actually increase salaries for the elected officials, including the mayor and city council, and as well as the directors and a, a handful of uh, other municipal employees. So let me get to the specifics there. So the first reading of the ordinance would bump the mayor's salary from $116,950 to $130,000, though there's a caveat here, an important caveat, and that is that this will not take effect until the next mayor is elected. So not really sure why they're including it now, but I guess just for the sake of, uh, I guess just, just clarity and just for the sake of uh, cleanness, I guess you could say, they're doing it uh, as part of the whole bunch. I guess when you do a salary range, it's not uncommon to include everyone from top to bottom. So with that, you'd also see the council members get a decent raise. Uh, their part-time salaries are $24,130. That would go up to $35,000. Not a bad increase there. And the council vice president would get thirty-seven thousand five hundred, and the president, council president that is, would get forty thousand dollars. And if approved, those increases would take effect at the beginning of twenty twenty-two. So the municipal directors right now they're capped at one hundred thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. But if this goes through, and it already cleared on first reading, there that would go up to one hundred seventy thousand dollars. The business administrator is capped at one hundred seventy thousand currently. But again, if this order is is approved, then it would go up to $199,000. So we heard from the city spokeswoman, that's Marilyn Bear, and she said the first reading amending salary ranges for certain employees does not guarantee anyone a raise, but rather just increase the range in one's salary. It was drafted to ensure the city remains competitive in attracting and retaining talented employees over the last few years. Several high caliber directors have left the employee of the city after receiving higher paying job offers with similar titles elsewhere. So. Uh, the examples that I noted is that former business administrator Stephen Marks left last year for the same post in his hometown of Cardi, and we know that former assistant business administrator Patrick Weary left to serve as the Waldwick business administrator in 2019. And uh, we heard from Councilwoman Tiffany Fisher, of course the second ward rep, and she said the city council has taken measures to reduce salary costs in the past. In 2020, the city council approved a 10% reduction in salaries for this same group of electeds and directors for all of 2020 as a way to contribute towards reducing the tax burden on residents at a time when we were facing unprecedented high tax increases. So she's calling this for the, to be tabled, but that didn't happen. It passed 5-2 to 1. And uh, her and Councilwoman Jen Giatino, the sixth ward rep, voted no. Ruben Ramos abstained, and first ward councilman Mike DeFusco was not present. So we're going to take one more break. We'll be right back after these messages. Not everyone celebrates the birth of a baby. You have options. Don't panic. New Jersey has safe havens for unwanted infants. Leave the baby with staff at any hospital, ER, police, or fire station, or rescue squad. Call the number on your screen for Safe Haven locations or go to www.njsafehaven.org. No shame, no blame, no names. Safe Haven.
Hudson County View live at Uncut, John Arhitis. So one more note for out of Hoboken. So let's talk about how some uh, residents and council members feel about City Hall still being only open by appointment only. Now, this is not terribly uncommon, as I noted. Uh, you know, Jersey City, appointment only, Bayonne, appointment only. However, there are some municipalities, for example, Union City, that are operating at pre-pandemic levels. You know, it's uh, wide open, everybody's there. You could just walk in. Their meetings are in person only, no, no, no stream even. So, you know, I mean, we, we've seen both approaches. Uh, and, you know, Bayonne's kind of in between as well. While their city hall is appointment only, you are able to attend their meetings in person again. The council does show up with the business administrator, the law director, et cetera. And uh, there is a stream available still. But uh, in Hoboken, you know, it's a Zoom only meeting and appointment only at city hall, uh, which is the same thing as Jersey City. So anyway, the point here is that there, there is a call for them to open to pre-pandemic levels. So uh, Cheryl Fallick, who ran for council on the Independently Together slate in November 2nd, she brought up the question, are we ever gonna get back to these in-person meetings? And uh, you know, we heard from third ward councilman Mike Russo, who was in favor. And uh, we also heard from a few other council members that said that they would like to see this too, including council women Tiffany Fisher and uh, Jen Giatino. So, um, and also, before we get to them, uh, we heard from uh, another resident, his name's Michael Summers, and he said that uh, they had the wrong Zoom link up on the city website, so if you wanted to call in, dial into the meeting, you obviously weren't able to do so if you were doing it that, you know, straight off the website. So that's another reason why they believe that this should be uh, totally open. So uh, Jen Giatino, who's of course the council vice president, she noted that I had a constituent call me who went to City Hall this past week to pay their taxes and they could walk into City Hall and pay their taxes, which is kind of like the ultimate slap in the face if you're going to pay your taxes to the city of Hoboken. And, uh, you know, she basically joked that the, the security is practically ready to tackle you if you're ready to go in there. And uh, there is a tax drop-off box, to be fair. And, uh, the, you know, you just put the envelope in the box. But, uh, again, it just some members of the public and, again, some council members just feel like this hasn't been well communicated. So... With that said, uh, you know, to, uh, Councilwoman Fisher added that we get complaints all the time saying it's hard to reach anyone by phone, it's hard to actually make the appointment, and uh, so on and so forth. But we heard from Business Administrator Jason Freeman that said City Hall is open, it's open by appointment only. At the end of the day, City Hall is an office building. There's 150 employees there every single day, some are vaccinated, some are not. And we're trying our best to keep them safe and keep the residents safe. And uh, you know, he continued that uh, basically, you know, we're not worried about what other municipalities are doing. We're doing what makes sense in the Miles Square City. And this isn't going to be forever, but this is just something that uh, we got to work through as part of the pandemic, long story short. Uh, you know, there was no formal action taken on this. So, you know, I would expect this appointment only and the Zoom meetings to remain uh, for the foreseeable future. Though, it should be noted that Council President Ruben Ramos said on December 1st he expects to be back in Council Chambers. So let's keep an eye on that. And... Uh, there were two interesting crime stories, just extremely quickly. A peaceful surrender negotiated for a woman who threatened to harm Secaucus police with a knife. Uh, so that's great work, obviously, by the SWAT team and the Secaucus police. And uh, there was also this incident where the Hudson County Schools of Technology bus crashed into the front of a North Bergen home. That's under investigation by the Hudson County Sheriff's Office. So with that, we're going to call it a week. Thanks, guys. Have a great Thanksgiving. We'll see you the week after that.